The ATPT is honestly a piece of garbage. I'm tired of defending it. I'm tired of seeing people defend it. The ATPT is not good and it should go away. I've had beef with the ATPT ever since Star Wars Rogue Squadron for the N64. As I covered in a prior video, one of the most difficult missions of that entire game has you in snow speeders, by the way, covering a rebel strike force which breaks in to a heavily guarded Imperial facility only to steal, and I'm not joking, a trio of AT. PTs. If those things weren't made out of like kyber crystals or something very, very expensive, I'm just going to tell you that mission's not worth it. Let's clear up some of the misconceptions as well. As I was doing my research for this, I was looking at source books and whatever else, and they list the ATPT's max speed at 60 kilometers per hour. I don't know if you've ever driven 60 kilometers per hour, but there is no way that thing is moving anywhere close to that. The legs have like 36 joints each. They're a mechanical nightmare. The thing just barely trugs along, and it's really a small victory if it gets to where it's going without breaking down. It's not all bad. I'll get back to the bad in a minute, but the thing I like about the ATPT is that it's essentially a force multiplier. You take infantry, you put them in what is essentially a very large, very ugly, very stupid looking mech, and they can do a lot more damage. The ATPT did have a main blaster cannon. Some came with concussion grenade launchers. That all is good. The fact that you can take a single person, give them a lot of weapons, and allow them to cause destruction, that's good. As is the fact that, according to the new Essential Guide to Vehicles, it's pretty safe against small arms fire. With the good out of the way, let's talk about the bad. So the ATPT was largely an experimental walker. That's why we don't see it very frequently outside of a few specific examples. The, again, new essential guide to vehicles says that the ATPT was originally developed by the Republic and found its best use in reconnaissance and patrol duty. Patrol duty, I get, I guess, but the reconnaissance duty bit is sort of undercut by the fact that in the preceding line, it specifically says that the ATPT had only a very primitive sensor suite. And again, I'm sorry, there's no way this thing is moving 60 kilometers per hour. 20 kilometers, you could probably sell me on that. 60 kilometers, it's just not happening. There's no way that this vehicle is going in a legal speed within a school zone. Both of these roles already have better walkers. If you're doing scouting and reconnaissance, I don't see how this thing is anywhere near as effective as the much more mobile ATRT. That's a vehicle that you can get around with and tackle tough terrain with. It also doesn't really look like the ATPT can move laterally very easily. I mean, look at the leg joints. Unlike the ATST as well, because of how the legs are situated, the body is not able to swivel independently. So if you want to turn and fire on an enemy, you actually have to turn the entire walker rather than just turn what you would call its head or its body. Also, they say that it's safe against small arms fire and maybe it's going to hold off a blaster pistol. I don't doubt that. But one thing I also notice is that these big exposed joints are typically a walker's vulnerability. We've seen that across Star Wars. I don't think this thing is surviving a rocket to the knee joint. I mean, the pilot may not be killed, but I bet the thing is going down pretty hard. I think in most situations where you want an anti-personnel vehicle, I'd prefer an ATST. It's got better height, it's got better range and better weapons, it's a lot more flexible and able to respond to quick moving threats, and I think it's probably a little less goofy looking. Want to keep it down to one person so you can get that real bang for your buck? Well, how about the all-terrain advanced radar, or as it's known in canon, the all-terrain defense pod? These things actually look cool. They're nimble. They've got that height. They look like they were actually meant to move. And they have both a turreted gun and a body capable of moving. We see in Rebels that these can be piloted by a single person. And I know what you're thinking. Maybe then the ATPT would be better against heavier vehicles. And that's where I think the look of the craft itself is a little bit misleading. This is specifically an anti-personnel vehicle. It has a light blaster cannon. If you could mount like a single heavy turbo laser on there, I think we're maybe talking. Even maybe like a miniaturized version of the ATAP, but it seems like the ATST's weapons, while still being relatively light, are probably more powerful as it was a mixed anti-personnel slash anti-vehicle craft. So yeah, the ATPT sucks. We have beef. We've tried to talk it out. It's just not working. I like the idea of force multipliers, taking a lot of infantry, putting them in these essentially mechs and making them more effective and deadlier. 
The problem is ATPTs are expensive and they're sort of in a weird role where they're not great against infantry, but they don't really have the weapons to contend with anything larger, nor the armor. I think you're better off going with an ATST or even in some cases something like an ATRT. Just my opinion though, let me know yours down below. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, may the force be with you.